you know, if we are looking at something like a high intensity interval training and we're just looking at the positives of it, of, you know, you, you are, you know, training higher to maximum heart rate, you're getting, you know, higher amplitude of muscle contraction and, you know, all this stuff, but you're also not looking at the negative of it. Well, then your ability to do that style of training is going to be very short lived. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast, where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we are coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And if you are looking for way to learn a little bit more about how to exercise to build the health and function of your body, you need to check out our one workout away challenge. This challenge is 28 days and it is designed to teach you how you can be just one workout away from feeling stronger, from functioning better, and from living healthier. And today, that's kind of what we're talking about is actually a broadcast that we did from the One Workout Away Challenge. So if today's podcast is intriguing to you, if you want to learn more, and if what I just told you leads you to want to learn more as well, then you need to head to owa.matschaumburg.com to learn more about the One Workout Away Challenge and sign up for the next one that's starting soon. Our next one, if you're listening to this live, is on January 3rd, 2021. But if you're listening to this, because I know we get a lot of people that jump on later, we actually do this about every other month minus the summer month. So at any time, you can go to owa.matschaumburg.com and find out when the next date will be starting. That would be appropriate for you. But if you follow us live, the next one is January 3rd. It's a great one to jump into. And all you need to participate is a Facebook group. You need to pay the low a, a Facebook account. Oh, I'm sorry. A Facebook account, the low registration fee, and about 20 minutes a day. Not only are we teaching you guys focused workout techniques that we do live, or you can obviously do them on replay if you're at work or whatever if the time doesn't work out for you, um, but you can jump on. But we're also trying to educate you guys on different topics. So we want you to feel like you leave the workouts, not just, or the, the workout group or the one workout away challenge after the 28 days, not that you had great workouts because you will, but also that you gain some insight and some knowledge. So anyways, right now the way we have it structured is on Fridays we do Q&A Fridays and we actually recorded this for Q&A Friday. We had a brilliant question come up talking about workout efficiency. Our goal right now with our group is to teach participants how to work out efficiently because we're actually coming up on the holidays and it is important that we get in our workouts to maintain our health but it's also important to honor the season and and we all know that we lose time we lose our schedule during the holiday season so we are talking about workout efficiency and the question that came up was I kind of thought workouts that were efficient were more hit style and so we talk about this in this Q&A and really address what is efficiency when you work out? What are signs that your workout efficiency is is kind of diminishing during a workout or after a workout? Because really, everyone's workout, everyone's best workout for them is different, right? Because we're all so different. We have different bodies, we have different tolerances. And so we're teaching you how to read signs that your body is going to give you um, so that you can better adjust your workouts in the now and in the future. So without further ado, enjoy this recording from the One Workout Away Challenge that, again, you can sign up for at owa.matschaumburg.com. To sum it up, this is the A to the Q. Okay, just leave that in there. <laughs> cool. Sounds so good. today's question is about efficiency and efficiency with the workouts. Because we're talking about, hey, you know, making sure that you can work out during the holidays. And one thought is, well, 
You need to be efficient with your workouts when you have little time. And so today's question kind of has to deal with that and is talking about how we are conducting the workouts versus something like a high intensity interval training or a hit based kind of workout. Yeah, I think that the it's like if you see the abbreviation HIIT workouts, those ones are normally labeled as like, you know, get everything you need done in 20 minutes and that's all you need to do. And yes, our workouts also are, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. But we wanted to talk about what this high intensity interval training is all about because it really isn't a bad way to work out at all. No. But there are some things that seem to be very common when it comes to these high interval, high intensity interval trainings that we find as things that, you know, you just need to be cautious of. And again, we're talking about this because this is normally the, the workout that's labeled as really efficient, like right. get it done right. super fast. Yeah, exactly. And so I think one thing we, we also should talk about is like, what does it actually mean to be efficient with your workouts? Right. So I think one of the, the ideas with the high intensity interval training is it's, it's efficient because it's done in a short amount of time and you can get a lot of benefit from it. But but if we're going to use that definition, which actually I think is is not a bad definition of efficiency, you get a lot of positive with minimal investment from a time perspective. Um, I, I think we also need to ask, well, why are you getting positive results from it? And are there other ways to get positive results without the prospective negatives that go along with, with uh, hit training or high intensity interval training? Yeah. And I think that like, you know, to add to that, like we need to talk about, well, what is efficient, but we also need to talk about like, well, what is not only efficient, but like a, a sign of a positive workout, you know, like a lot of times when we're doing these things like, oh, it's going to be efficient, quick, I can do it in a condensed time. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, the, the criteria that like a normal person and would like label as like, that oh, was a good workout. It's like, did you get like a little bit sweaty? Did your heart rate get up? Did you feel like you use like some legs, some abs and some arms, you know, like mm -hmm. I worked my body. And sometimes that can be a great way to work out. And sometimes for some people, that is a really challenging thing because of the setbacks that can go along with it. I think the way that the high intensity interval training workouts are usually structured is that you're moving quite quickly through the exercises, meaning there's not a lot of rest. Cause again, we're trying to get a lot in in a little bit of time. And then the movements that you're doing are usually very kind of like these gross movements where they're like large movements or combo movements. And we see a huge issue with those with a lot of individuals because they cause a lot of soreness, achiness. And if you have like an orthopedic issue, sometimes that is like the biggest thing that will flare that thing up. And then you're out of working out for, for a little while. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the, the idea is like, Hey, if your goal from working out for, for or from your workout is to just create as much of a general challenge and kind of physical exhaustion as possible, well, then going really hard, like is done in the, the uh, high intensity interval training classes, you know, that that would be a way to do that. But if that's not your goal from working out, well, then those hit classes are probably actually less efficient because they're not helping you reach your goals. So, for example, if your goal is to improve the, the health of your body, there's a lot of health benefits from working out really intensely but your body has to be able to tolerate doing that. If your goal is to improve the function of your body, there's probably fewer benefits to working out at that in the in that hit style manner and a lot greater benefit to working out in the, the manner that we are kind of conducting our workout, which is kind of the slow and controlled motions, you know, looking at single joint exercises, you know, really heavy emphasis on resistance training, less on trying to get your, uh, you know, your heart rate up a whole bunch. So I, I think that's, that's a strong consideration is like, well, what's your goal from the workout? Is your goal from the workout to feel like you just crushed your body? Go for the hit. Absolutely. All right. That's going to be a great way to do that. But if your goal is to progress the health and function of your body and do so in a sustainable manner, then hit's probably not the way that you want to go.
Yeah. So the way that we have decided to, st- st- to structure our, you know, quote unquote, efficient workouts that we're trying to teach you the structure of, as you're probably picking up, there's some patterns to it. But you'll see that there are a lot of things that happen in every single workout, meaning there's a large emphasis on form. There's a lot of emphasis on control and speed and um, how you're moving and having options. Because what we find a lot in the fitness industry is a lot of the same stuff. And all of this same stuff seems to cater to people that do really well with working out. But the problem is that I think, Charlie, you have a better number on this, but not a lot of people work out, meaning like 20% of the population works out and most of them don't work out because of time or because they don't like how it feels. And so we're trying to create or give you guys workouts and examples of, of ways to exercise that can be changed or body matched or manipulated so that it could potentially work for a larger amount of people than what the very narrow scope of the current fitness industry offers, which is again, It's great for people that are already working out, which is the very small 20% or less of people. But that means that 80% of people aren't being, aren't finding workouts that are working for their bodies or their schedule. So again, that hit style workout, those quick, efficient workouts are really great because they're appealing for the time piece. But remember, we still have that huge part of the population where it's like, hey, you're not working out because nothing's fitting your body because everything is very aggressive, intense, not very form focused, not controlled, not muscle centric, not body matching. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's how we've decided to structure our workouts in the goal of being, hey, when you do these workouts, you know, you're going to get the benefit of the workouts with hopefully you're, you're changing the workouts to fit your body so that you get the least amount of negative side effect. Cause you have to imagine every workout has pros and cons to it. You know, our goal is to help you guys learn about where are the cons for my body? Cause for my body, Charlie's body, your body is all different, but the less negative side effects we can get, the more that we can return to the workouts and continue to exercise and be active and move each and every day. Um, and I think a lot of times we, we seek out workouts that have the biggest positive, but they might be equipped also with very large negatives. So we forget about that part because we think about the sweat, the heart rate, the calorie burn, all the stuff that's kind of marketed to us in the fitness industry on the news, social media, the internet, all very reliable sources for right. Exercise. Well, no, it's such a great point. And you know, actually, yesterday during the the live broadcast I did for the Exercise for Life Method group, mm-hmm. uh, I talked about this idea of kind of tolerating your workouts and what does it mean to tolerate your workouts. And I said, you know, a lot of times, like tolerance can be thought of on a continuum, where you have on the on the one end you get a massive amount of benefit with like zero negative repercussions. That means like you're highly tolerating your workout or that, that stimulus. Then there's like a mix. You might get some benefit, some negative repercussions. You're moderately tolerating it. And then the, the other one, the other end is, you know, almost no positive benefit and, you know, all negative repercussions. It means like you didn't really tolerate it very well. And a lot of times it's, it's thought of like that. And so actually, actually, I almost like to think of it as very binary, binary in the terms of negative repercussions. So were there negative repercussions? Yes, that means you didn't tolerate your workout. Were there no negative repercussions? So zero negative repercussions. There weren't any negative repercussions. That means you did tolerate your workout. And and I think if you can look at it from, from that perspective, as opposed to like on the continuum of like, Oh, it was such a good workout. Yeah. I got a little bit sore, but you know, I'm willing to make that trade off and just say, were there any negative repercussions? Oh, there were. Okay. That means at some level I didn't tolerate my workout. Then you can start to say, okay, oh, what do I need to change in order to make sure that I do tolerate my work and I don't get any of those negative repercussions. And, and the reason why I like that is because it, it doesn't allow you to compromise at all. It doesn't allow you to compromise and say, yeah, you know what? I feel a little bit achy with this. I feel, you know, beat up and sore, but you know what? I really like doing it. So I'm going to keep doing it. it. It doesn't allow for that. And it just says, Hey, you know what? If there's any negative repercussions, something needs to change. And so to to your point, Julie, like the, the body matching and, you know, the majority of people not exercising and, and, and a large part of that is because exercise doesn't feel good for their body. 
you know, if we are looking at something like a high intensity interval training and we're just looking at the positives of it, of, you know, you, you are, you know, training higher to maximum heart rate, you're getting, you know, higher amplitude of muscle contraction and, you know, all this stuff, but you're also not looking at the negative of it. Well, then your ability to do that style of training is going to be very short lived because your body's clearly not tolerating it at some level. And so I think taking more of a binary approach as opposed to a continuum approach when it comes to tolerating your workouts can, can lead to better exercise decisions long-term. It doesn't mean that you can't do the stuff where you still have some negative repercussions, but at least acknowledge it and say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'm feeling that. What do I need to change in order to, to have zero negative repercussions? Yeah, it's a great point. And I think we're never really taught about like, what are the negative repercussions? Or how do you know those are happening when you work out? Because a lot of times in exercise, they're glorified. Mm -hmm. There again, there's a very small percentage of the population that enjoys that. I'm going to say suffering because I don't like it. But you know, that kind of result. Mm -hmm. So some things to look out for. Okay, so what I wanted to say before I go into this, So bottom line is a lot of HIIT style training people don't tolerate well. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue with it. If you tolerate it fine and you enjoy it, great. If you don't tolerate it very well and you still enjoy it, that's fine. It's your choice to do it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't tolerate it well and also just don't like it because it's not only hurting them, but it's actually giving them a lot of like negative wear and stress on their body, their joints, their muscles. So how do you know if you're not tolerating your workout well? Okay. So there is no set rule that like everyone should do X, Y, Z. It's just why when we cue you with your working out, we're constantly reminding you like, okay, so remember to match this to your body. Make sure you're remember body matching. We kind of use as the term instead of modifications because modification oftentimes feels like the inferior option or the lesser option, but actually remember the best option for you is what matches your body, what works well for your body. Okay. So during the workout, you need to be observing and after your workout, you need to be observing. So during your workout and Charlie chime in, if I miss some, Okay. Some ways to know if you're not tolerating your workout well, there are some systemic things like you feel nauseous or lightheaded or headachey, or you start getting like intense hot flashes. That's like a nervous system response. Like this whole thing is, is too much for your body. Some like, I want to say like jointy muscly things would feel like my body feels like it's tightening up. Or I'm actually having joint pain when I do this exercise, like there's, I'm feeling pain in the joint, or you also might feel something more acute that's, that is like, you know, something felt like, you know, I got injured or I went too far with something. So any of those feelings that feel like, well, I feel like stimulus or muscles being challenged. Those are usually all signs that your body doesn't tolerate whatever you're doing in some way at that moment, at that time, or given your current state. And given your current state is a huge piece because as we go into the holidays, you're gonna be doing things like not sleeping enough, maybe drinking too much alcohol, having too much sugar. So your body's gonna be different than what it normally is. So that means we need to take into account those stressors. Did I miss any that you can think of that are like well, pretty normal in workout? Yeah, so one thing, one thing from a like a systemic standpoint is just like a, a feeling lethargic or like overly fatigued. I think yeah. that, that that's a big one. And then I also talked about some more minute ones because I, I think those, the ones that we mentioned are like very gross, like they're very obvious, but I think there are some things that you can recognize that you're trending in the direction of not tolerating your workouts. And one being that during the workout, like your range of motion is starting to decrease. Like you're, you're already noticing that your body's starting to tighten up, even though it might not feel tight. Your, your range of motion is decreasing. It's starting to become less. That, that to me is an indication that you are not tolerating the, the workout that's happening. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. When you are moving and activating your muscles in an appropriate way, your body should actually be moving more freely, more, more fluid, So that was a great one, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the other thing that we don't get to know about your workout until is, is some, is some information that you can gather about yourself after the workouts. And this is good information to take with you to your coming workouts, you know, because we can do the best decisions ever in a workout, 
taking notes of all the stuff we talked about, but then there's stuff that might show up after your workout. It's really important for you to take mental notes of and make changes for the upcoming workout. So some of the stuff is very similar, except for it happens after your workout. For example, if you finish your workout and again, you start feeling really, really lethargic after, you know, after an hour or so you're like, wow, I don't feel like I'm bouncing back from that. I feel like I need to like sit down, lay down, you know, drink a ton of orange juice or something, you know, I don't know. Sometimes you'll feel like flu-like symptoms coming on. Like you feel like you're actually kind of ill. I think Charlie and I have both experienced that. It's a weird one, but yeah, definitely learning experience. Another one is again, those joint issues. If they pop up later on in the day or the following day, soreness and achiness, like not being able to sit on your toilet or go up and down your stairs is not fun or cute or a sign of a good workout. So those kinds of things. And soreness is definitely one that's weird because in our in the people that love working out, a lot of them love that feeling, but it's not necessarily a sign. It's not really a sign of like positive results from your workout. So those are really important signs that, Hey, what you did, even though you didn't notice anything during the workout after the workout, your body's saying, Whoa, that was a little intense for me. That was, that was actually a, a bit more of that negative stuff as opposed to more of the positive stuff. Yeah. I think one thing that we hear about a lot is people saying, oh, you know, like it's a, it's a good soreness. It's an awareness. And I think there's an issue that I have with creating awareness through soreness. You know, when you can create awareness in your body of your muscles and how your body's moving, but it shouldn't be because they have like a low level ache to them. It should be because you feel a greater connection to them. It's like, oh yeah, now all of a sudden I actually feel my shoulder muscles, not in a painful, sore, achy way, but like I can control those muscles. Like I have ownership over this area now. And that's how you should be leaving your workouts, not saying, oh yeah, no, I totally feel my shoulders because I just, you know, smashed them with seven sets of of shoulder press. And, you know, now I have this soreness here and that's why I'm aware of it. You should should feel a greater connection to the area, like you have greater ownership or control over the area. Right. Right. Like the, yeah, definitely the, the awareness of the area from connection and stimulation, not because of like annihilation or pain basically. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So just as a reminder, we brought these up. I was just trying to think, why are we talking about this again? Because we're talking about workout efficiency mm-hmm. and we want your workouts to be, I would rather see every workout be one step forward and you know, there's always learning going on. So maybe, you know, an eighth of a step back from the negative side effects of the workout because of things we didn't know and we're learning about ourselves versus three steps forward because you got all this positive stuff and, you know, two and a half steps back because you also took on a lot of the negative stuff of, you know, all the stuff we just talked about, like the soreness, the achiness. What is that word? Lethargy. Is that a word? It is. I know I normally say lethargic, and I'm like, how do I uh, convert that, (laughs) you know, or joint pain. So again, we're trying to, we're trying to teach you guys how to get, how to do efficient workouts that have a whole bunch of the positive and more minimal of the negative than what we often see in the current fitness world. Yeah, for sure. And so then just kind of coming for full circle with it is again, the idea of efficiency is, you know, biggest amount of result in least amount of time, for example, that, that could be one way to think about efficiency. And from a workout perspective, you know, if you are using exercise to build the health and function of your body, which reminder, that's the one and only goal of exercise to build the health and function of your body, then how you are exercising is a way is should be done in a way that you can keep coming back to it. And so if you find that, you know, with your hit workouts, you're not able to keep coming back to them because you're not tolerating them at some level. Well, then by definition, that way of exercising is not going to be sustainable for you, which means it's not meeting the goal of exercise, which means it's actually a very inefficient way to exercise as opposed to how we're doing it during the one workout away challenge where it's slow, controlled, focused, really zeroing, zeroing in on squeezing muscles, making sure your form is correct. That is a sustainable way to exercise because you can keep coming back to it, which means you have, you continue to have the opportunity to build the health and function of your body 
which means when you're doing that workout, that is a far more efficient way to exercise than a way that you're not going to be able to come back to. Yeah. Just as a funny story, because I love sharing, Charlie, you and I, we have such a fun like fitness background. Like people think that we've always been this way, but no, we were like the regular fitness people, probably Charlie way more extreme than I was. But I remember an example of one of this, this is not hit workouts, but an example of the style of workouts that can be very aggressive and have a lot of the quote unquote positive, but also have a lot of negative for a lot of people is CrossFit. So again, I don't want to say CrossFit is bad, but anyways, I've never, I never had done CrossFit. And then I remember one of my friends was like, come to CrossFit with me. I was like, sure, it's a free workout. I've never done it. You know, just gotta go crazy hard. And cause I work out hard. I remember after I did CrossFit, I literally laid on my floor for an hour straight. Like I could not move. Cause I was like so exhausted and like my arm felt like jiggly, like, you know, in your body, like feels jiggly. And then I couldn't work out for a whole week after that. So that's a sign of like, that was like, so during the workout, I was like, heck yeah, this is so intense. Look at me. I'm like doing some crazy junk, you know, and my body wasn't prepared for that. So my body didn't tolerate it very well. And the, the, the side effect of that is that I got maybe, you know, the five steps of positive, but I also got, you know, four and three quarters of the negative. Plus I couldn't work out for a week because my body was just like, uh, no, we just went through a whole body assault here. Like that was intense. So that's just a, a, a very extreme example of one that I experienced where, you know, my range of motion was, was in the dumps. I was sore, achy. I could barely get up and down the stairs. I, again, I was extra fatigued to like, I wasn't energized from that workout. I was just laying around. So those, those were all the signs we brought up that you're have, you're not tolerating your workout very well at all. But I chose to ignore those. I actually wasn't aware. So I was doing it out of ignorance, which is bliss, of course. Right. Uh-huh. But anyways, so that was just an example, a fun example of something that I experienced. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Anyway. I, th- I think a lot of people can relate to that, you know, whether it's a, whether it is a CrossFit class or a different style of, of group training, the high intensity stuff, you know, it's a lot of fun while you're doing it, or it can be a lot of fun while you're doing it. And when you finish, you're like, wow, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, great. I think that's a, that's an awesome wrap up to great. this week's question. If you have more questions, feel free to send them over to us. We will be sure to answer them in one of the next two Q&A sessions coming up during the next two Fridays. Great. And we, yeah, stay tuned. Tomorrow, we have a bonus workout coming your way. That'll be released at 6 a.m. tomorrow. And then Sunday, you get a new challenge. So tomorrow for the bonus workouts, I think the bonus workouts are the probably the most intense workouts that we are giving you guys. So I challenge you guys when you do it tomorrow to look out for those negative during the workout stuff and those negative post-workout stuff. Because we're going to ask you about it on Tuesday when we're live. Because I yep. want to know if you were able to observe them in your body um, now that we've talked about it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you all later. So think back to workouts that you've done recently or workout or your idea of working out. Do you resonate or do any of these signs and symptoms resonate with you? Did you feel excessively sore or have those, you know, weird, crazy fatigue (laughs) symptoms after your workouts? Because actually, in our practice today, Charlie and I get a lot of people that want to work out and they've told us that working out doesn't work for them. Because the current fitness industry is telling them that they need to work out in a manner that leaves them feeling, you know, beat up, sore, achy, their joints are bothering them, they're getting tighter, they're getting more orthopedic issues when, you know, working out is supposed to do the opposite. So, Relate this to your workouts or your perceived notions about fitness and see if you can manipulate things in your workout to leave those symptoms out. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is experiencing a lot of these negative repercussions that we discuss from not tolerating their workouts and share this episode with them so they can learn more about these signs and symptoms as well as what to start doing about it and how to adjust their workouts to make it more appropriate for their body and better allow their body to tolerate their workouts. And while you're online, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find this podcast. 
podcasts, when they're looking for episodes on exercise, and when they're looking for episodes on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating review. And don't forget the next One Workout Away Challenge is starting soon. Go to owa.matschaumburg.com to learn more about these 28-day challenges and register for the next one. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week.